Hello viewers and welcome to iTenet. In today's episode we will be talking about the history of education in Ghana, that is the castle school system from 1529 to 1830. Margaret Gillett defines education as something concerned with tradition, preserving and transmitting of values, ideas, practices which have proved over the years to be worthwhile. Before the introduction of the Western formal education in Ghana, the indigenous Ghanaians has their own form of education. The indigenous Ghanaian education was highly informal it was the moral responsibility of all adults especially parents to teach the youth the values, norms and tradition of the society. The introduction of western formal education in modern Ghana was closely tied to the coming of the European merchants to the Guinea coast from the middle of the 15th century. The first of these merchants were the Portuguese, who even though were primarily interested in trading activities, felt the need to provide formal education to the indigenous people, to serve as a catalyst for smooth commercial activities. The Danish, Dutch and English merchants who set up schools in their forts, the best known castle schools on the Gold Coast, included the one operated by the Dutch at the former Portuguese fortress at Elmina, the British school at Cape Coast Castle, and the Danish school at Christiansborg, near Accra, to educate their mulatto children by native women. These schools produced some brilliant native scholars such as Anthony William Amo of Axim, Christian Proton of Accra and Philip Quaco of Cape Coast. These men continued their education in Europe, financed by the merchant companies, and served as role models for others upon their return home. Because the merchants lived in the castles scattered along the coast, the school they established were all confined to these places therefore were commonly referred to as the castle schools. Children who largely benefited from these schools were the sons of European traders by African wives who were normally referred to as mulattoes, and the sons of native wealthy merchants. Here are the educational efforts of various European merchants from 1529 to 1830. The Portuguese at Elmina, Edina. The Portuguese merchants arrived at the coast of modern Ghana in January, 1471. They engage in trading activities with the people of Elmina for 11 years. They eventually obtained a land from the king of Elmina and built a castle in 1482. They named the castle Seo George Damana, or Saint George. In 1529 the first school was established in Ghana upon instructions by King John III of Portugal. The school was to teach the Gold Coast children how to read, write and also to teach them the Christian religion. In this school, the Portuguese language was the medium of instruction and the teachers were paid about 240 grains of gold a year for each pupil taught up to a maximum of 15. The school operated for some time, and few students were given scholarship to study abroad. The Portuguese attempt was abandoned in 1637, when the Dutch captured the Elmina Castle. The Dutch in Elmina. After driving out the Portuguese, the Dutch West Indian Company established its headquarters at Elmina and soon afterwards, established a school for the mulatto children there. The main curriculum of the school was composed of reading, writing, and religion. The Dutch language was used as a means of instruction. One major characteristic of the Dutch educational enterprise was the granting of scholarship to some boys in their school to study abroad specifically Holland. But only few of them return home and actually contributed to the promotion of education in the country. Jacobus Capitine, a mulatto, who was sent out by a Dutch trader called Van Gogh was one of those who returned home after graduating from Leiden University in 1737. He was later ordained as the first Protestant African priest and was subsequently appointed chaplain of the Dutch company at Elmina. He established school at the castle which enrolled 45 pupils in 1740. Capitine was regarded as a pioneer of vernacular literature for his translation of Apostles' Creed into Fandi. He also translated the words prayers, the Ten Commandment and parts of the Catechism into Fandi. At the time of his death in 1747, Capitine had 400 boys and girls in his school. Anthony Anno, a native of Axum also enjoyed a Dutch scholarship to study abroad in 1707. 
In 1734, he obtained his degree in the University of Württemberg and was appointed professor of philosophy and logic. He was a councillor of state in court of Berlin. It is on record that he spent 37 years in Europe and later returned to Axim to live and work there. The Danes at Christiansborg. The Danes established themselves along the coast eastward of Accra, with their headquarters at Christiansborg Castle. They started their educational activities in 1722. The pupils in their schools were given skirts and caps to wear, and a soldier was employed to teach them. The Danish governor at the castle from 1822 to 1825, called Major de Richelieu was very instrumental in the establishment and progress of the Danish schools within this period. He even participated in the teaching work. Like the Dutch counterparts, the Danes also award scholarship to some of their pupils to study abroad. Two examples were Frederick Pedersen Svein and Christian Proton. The British at Cape Coast Castle. The British, by 1694 had established a school at Cape Coast under John Chilton. Like the school already discussed, the Cape Coast Castle School also concentrated on the three R's, reading, writing, arithmetic and religious knowledge. English was the medium of communication. The Cape Coast Castle School functioned effectively with prolonged lifespan than all school before it. This was due to the founding of the Society for the Propagation of the Gospel in England in 1701. Reverend. Thomas Thompson was one of the indefatigable missionaries of the society. He was appointed to the Cape Coast Castle in 1752 and stayed there till 1756. His main objective was to introduce Christianity to Africans. At his own expense, Reverend Thomas Thompson is on record organized the Cape Coast School and started teaching the Africans who came to him to learn. He gave scholarship to three boys to study in England at the expense of the society. The boys were Thomas Cabra, William Cudjo and Philip Quaco. Philip Quaco survived, and the other two died. Philip Quaco returned to the country in 1766, after obtaining the degree of Master of Arts at Oxford University. By the time he returned, Reverend Thompson had gone back to England because of ill health, and his school had been closed down. Quaco therefore, decided to reopen the school at Cape Coast. The school was eventually revived by Quaco, but continued with varying fortunes until his death. The enrollment varying between 16 and no children. The Torrid Zonian Society played a very important role in providing Philip Quaco with money to operate his school. This society was founded in 1787 by group of officers employed by the company merchants at the Cape Coast Castle. Philip Quaco was also a member of the society. Here are the difficulties encountered by Philip Quaco. The first difficulty had to do with the fact that the indigenous people were not committed to the activities of the school. Some even felt that Quaco was wasting his time by engaging in white men's education. Again, in 22 years from 1773 to 1795 there was a break in communication between him and the missionary committee. The committee only wrote him twice. It is on record that when Quaco died in 1816 his salary was even in arrears of £369. More also, the period also witnessed the Anglo-Dutch War of 1780, which led to the defeat of the British at Elmina the following year. Finally, the conflict between the people along the coast and the Assant Kingdom made it difficult for many people to enroll their children in Quaco School, the Cape Coast Colonial School. After Philip Quaco death, his school was reorganized and renamed the Cape Coast Colonial School in 1821. During this time, the Gold Coast was under the governorship of Sir Charles McCarthy. As time went on, it came to be called the Cape Coast Government School, until 1956, when government handed it over to the Cape Coast Municipal Council under the management of the Anglican Church. The Cape Coast Colonial School produced great nationalist like King Joseph A. Gray of Cape Coast who led the Fant Confederation. Joseph Smith also of Cape Coast who became headmaster of the school in 1829 and George Blankson of Anomabu who in 1861 became the first pure African member of the Legislative Council.
the castle along the coast in modern Ghana were mainly put up for defense and commercial activities. As time went on, the provision of formal education there became a common feature. Even though the castle school system was not entirely successful, yet its footprints on contemporary educational system are quite enormous. The following are the impacts of the castle school system on our education today. Firstly, introduction of literacy, numeracy, which constitute modern education system, as well as the promotion of religious and moral education. Again, some of the product of the castle school were brilliant and hardworking who achieved higher academic laurels. For example, William Anthony Amo obtained a doctorate degree and was appointed as professor of philosophy and logic and Philip Quaco also obtained master's degree from Oxford University. These achievements clearly portrayed that Africans, Ghanaian, could match the intellectual capabilities of the whites. That is whatever white man was capable of doing, the Africans could also do. Furthermore, the systematic development of Ghanaian local languages, which has become an integral part of our present educational system, could be traced to the pioneering work of products of the castle schools. Pioneers like Kapitin, Aousu and Saban Kwantabisa prepared the grounds for missionaries like Laring, Zimmerman, Westernman, Christella, and host of other missionaries who studied and developed various Ghanaian languages. This is the introduction of Western formal education in Ghana, the castle school system. We have noted that the education philosophy of the castle school system was to teach the indigenous people how to read, write, and also teach them the Christian religion. The Christian missionaries played crucial roles in the introduction of education in the country. If you want to know more about the activities of the various Christians missionaries, there is a playlist at the end of this video you can watch it. Thank you for watching, and do not forget to subscribe to the channel like and share the video. Thanks, and bye for now.